In 1995, Disney released Pocahontas, a film about a doomed whirlwind romance between a Native American woman, Pocahontas, and an English colonist, John Smith. But although both Pocahontas and John Smith were real people, the film takes some definite liberties with the facts of Pocahontas' life. For starters, Pocahontas was not even her real name, and even though she was portrayed as Smith's love interest in the film, Pocahontas was only around 11 years old when they met. In fact, most of what we know about Pocahontas comes from English accounts, accounts that were, of course, shaded with misunderstandings and biases. But the story of Pocahontas is a fascinating one. Hers is a tale of politics, love, intrigue, and tragedy. As a young child, she bore witness to the uneasy peace which bloomed between her people and the English settlers. She played an active role in keeping that peace, and, sadly, Pocahontas was ultimately betrayed by the English, the very people she'd long helped. Though she is best known as a Disney character today, the real-life story of Pocahontas is even more captivating than what appeared in the film. You're listening to History Uncovered, brought to you by the digital publisher All That's Interesting, where we explore the uncharted corners of the natural world and the world past. I'm All That's Interesting staff writer Kalina Fraga. Today, we're diving into the fact and fiction of the life story of Pocahontas. knew Pocahontas by her nickname, which means playful one, but she was given the private name Matawaka at birth and generally went by the name Amanute. She grew up at the dawn of the 17th century in present-day Virginia. Though she was the favorite daughter of a powerful poet and chief, Pocahontas came of age like other girls in her tribe. She learned how to accomplish tasks traditionally performed by women, like farming, building houses, gathering water and wood, and preparing animal remains for consumption or clothing. But Pocahontas' life, and the lives of her people, changed forever in 1607. In May of that year, English explorers arrived and established a settlement at Jamestown. Among them was a man named Captain John Smith. In the Disney movie, he's gallant. In real life, other colonists described him as abrasive and ambitious. While Smith was out exploring one day, he encountered a group of Powhatan hunters, including Pocahontas' uncle. They captured Smith and brought him from tribe to tribe, pointedly demonstrating that the strange man was human just like they were. Smith, however, had no idea what was happening. In his account, he was dragged before Pocahontas' father, where other members of her tribe forced his head onto a large stone. When another warrior raised a club, meaning Smith thought to bash his skull in, Pocahontas suddenly broke through the crowd and threw herself on top of Smith, protecting his head with her own. There's a scene like this in the Disney film, but historians suspect that Smith misinterpreted what was happening. It's likely that the tribe had not aimed to kill him at all, but rather initiate him as a respected chief. What's more, some tribal oral history suggests that Pocahontas was not even present. As a young girl, she might not have been allowed at ceremonies like this. Either way, Smith came out of the ceremony unscathed. Pocahontas' father welcomed him as a member of their tribe and gave him a choice plot of land on the York River. It seemed, at first, that the native people and the settlers might live in peace, but their alliance quickly fell apart. Following John Smith's encounter with Pocahontas and her people, the Poetan sent gifts of food to the English colonists, helping them to survive their difficult first winter in 1607. Pocahontas often went along when her tribe brought the colonists food, establishing herself, in their eyes, as a symbol of peace. She even demonstrated her playful nature by cartwheeling alongside local boys. But an extreme drought in 1608 put both the colonists and the native people in a difficult position. As 1608 dragged into 1609, the colonists asked for more and more to eat. They offered beads and other trinkets as trade. 
However, the native people had little to spare. Things grew so tense between the two that the colonists even threatened to burn down Powhatan villages if they didn't start trading. According to Smith, he went to the Powhatan and tried to negotiate in person, but when negotiations soured and the Powhatan departed, Pocahontas appeared from the woods with a warning. She told Smith and the other colonists that her father, irritated with their constant demands, planned to return and kill him. Once again, tribal oral histories tell a different story. They state that Smith's life was never in danger, and that Pocahontas, still a child, would not have been able to warn him even if it was. In any case, that was the last time that Pocahontas saw Smith for many years. Just like in the Disney movie, he was wounded and forced to return to England. But Pocahontas and her father were told that he had died. At this point, Pocahontas stopped seeing the English. Indeed, her father had moved their tribe to avoid the settlers' constant begging and threats, and her life went on. She became a woman according to tribal tradition and was wooed by a warrior named Kokuam. In the movie, Pocahontas is ambivalent about Kokuam, but in real life they married, possibly for love, and had a child together. But relations between the native people and the settlers were still strained, and one Englishman started to plot how he could use Pocahontas, her father's favorite child, as leverage against her people. In 1613, an Englishman named Captain Samuel Argyll hatched a plot to kidnap Pocahontas. He lured her onto a ship and ferried her to Jamestown, where he held her for ransom. Though her father agreed to many of his ransom demands, the English did not let Pocahontas go. Oral history suggests that they even told Pocahontas that her father didn't care about her and had refused to help rescue her. These oral histories also suggest that Pocahontas suffered in captivity. They claim that Pocahontas told her sister, who was sent to see her after Pocahontas suffered a nervous breakdown, that she'd been raped and was pregnant. But although the oral and written histories of Pocahontas' time in captivity differ often greatly, they do agree on some facts. While she was held by the settlers, Pocahontas learned how the English lived. She learned to speak their language, and she met a man named John Rolfe, who was credited with introducing tobacco to the New World. After changing her name to Rebecca and converting to Christianity, Pocahontas married him. Rolf is glaringly absent from the 1995 Disney movie, but he did make an appearance in the sequel, Pocahontas 2, as her love interest. And, to his credit, Rolf seemed to want to do things right when it came to Pocahontas. He even wrote to her father, begging for her hand in marriage. He said, quote, It is Pocahontas to whom my hearty and best thoughts are, and have been a long time so entangled and enthralled in so intricate a labyrinth that I could not unwind myself thereout." To the English governor, Rolf put things in more practical terms. He did not want to marry Pocahontas out of, quote, carnal affection, but for the good of this plantation and our country, and for the converting to the true knowledge of God and Jesus Christ, an unbelieving creature, unquote. It is unclear, however, what Pocahontas thought about her upcoming nuptials. Her thoughts are not recorded, and it's certainly possible that she felt she had little choice in the matter. As for her first husband, Kokuam, he's killed in the Disney film, and it's possible he met the same fate in real life. He may have also simply submitted to a divorce, which was not unusual among the Poetan. In any case, Pocahontas and John Rolfe married in 1614, which helped thaw relations between the English settlers and Native Americans. Indeed, the subsequent peace was called Peace of Pocahontas. It is important to note that oral tribal histories dispute the official timeline. They claim that Pocahontas gave birth to her son, Thomas Rolfe, before she got married, but other accounts say that she didn't have her son until well after the wedding. Two years later, as Lady Rebecca Rolfe, Pocahontas set out on a journey that few people like her had ever taken. She and her family prepared to sail to England. But, sadly, Pocahontas would never make it back home. (laughs) 
Pocahontas's trip to England wasn't one of leisure. The colonists had several goals in mind. First, they hoped to secure more financial support for the Virginia Company, which had financed the expedition to Jamestown. And they hoped to prove that their mission to convert Native Americans to Christianity and bring civilization to savages was really working. Their ship arrived in England in June 1616. There, Pocahontas was treated like royalty. She was seated near King James I and Queen Anne at a performance they all attended, and she sat for a portrait, the only known contemporary depiction of her, which is entitled Matawaka, alias Rebecca, daughter of the most powerful prince of the Powhatan Empire of Virginia. Plus, her trip brought her back into contact with John Smith, whom she had long thought dead. Their reunion was an uncomfortable one. Pocahontas apparently admonished him for mistreating her people and betraying her father's warm welcome. Coldly, she told Smith that she and her father had been told he died en route back to England, but her father didn't believe it because, quote, your countrymen will lie so much, unquote. All in all, however, the trip was a success, and, just like in Pocahontas too, Pocahontas and John Rolfe prepared to return to the New World together. But the movie ends with their ship sailing off peacefully into the sunset. The reality was not so joyful. Instead, tragedy struck. Pocahontas and Rolf had hardly started their journey when Pocahontas suddenly fell violently ill. She was taken ashore at Gravesend, England, where, according to Rolf, she uttered her last words, quote, All must die, but tis enough that my child liveth, unquote. She died in March 1617 at the age of just 20 or 21 years old. Today, no one is entirely sure what happened to her. She could have died from tuberculosis, pneumonia, dysentery, or smallpox. But members of her tribe who also went on the voyage believe that something much more sinister happened. Because Pocahontas fell ill so quickly and died so suddenly, they have suggested that she was poisoned, though it's unclear why anyone would want her dead. She was buried in England where, sadly, the location of her grave is no longer known. Her relatives have tried repeatedly to bring her home without any success. In the aftermath of her death, the peace between her people and the English settlers started to fall apart. Her father, struck by grief, died soon afterward. By 1622, Native Americans launched an attack on Jamestown that killed one quarter of all the colonists. Today, Pocahontas is largely seen through the lens of a Disney film. She's remembered by most as an animated character with long, dark hair, wisdom beyond her years, and animal friends. The truth is both more riveting and more tragic. In real life, Pocahontas was a young girl flung into historic circumstances. She was a woman snatched from her own world and dropped into an alien one. And though plenty of accounts exist about her life, from English settlers and from native people, she left no accounts of her own. We'll never know Pocahontas' thoughts and feelings. We'll never know her frustrations and desires. We'll never know how she felt about the English, her marriage, or sailing across an ocean. But we do know, and we should acknowledge, that Pocahontas was more than a Disney character. She was a real woman whose life left a profound impact on the Earth. Thanks for listening to History Uncovered. I'm History Uncovered's producer, Kit Westneat. If you like the show, help others find us by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And be sure to follow the All That's Interesting and History Revealed pages on Facebook and Real History Uncovered on Instagram. Make sure you don't miss out on the new episodes and subscribe to the History Uncovered podcast. And keep up with our latest stories at allthatsinteresting.com. If you have a question about the show or just want to say hi, feel free to call us at 929-526-3029 or email us at podcast at allthatsinteresting.com. This podcast is part of the Airwave Media Podcast Network. Visit airwavemedia.com to listen and subscribe to their other fine shows like Legends of the Old West and Redacted History. Until next time, keep exploring.